times. Mm, 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 mm. Better days, better days are coming. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus the Christ. I have been noticing that it seems as though in the last couple of weeks, everyone is trying to come for Prophetess Celestial of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Using her name to get attention, to get clout, and fame, and likes, and support. Dragging her in their mind. That's what they think they're doing. And just plain old coming for her. And it's really weird and I think of Prophetess Tiffany Montgomery where she says that, you know, a lot of people, a lot of your pastors are just gay. And, you know, Prophet Celestial, the Master's Voice said, you know, that the church, the body of Christ is largely, or I think the word she used was greatly gay. Help me, Holy Ghost. A, C, mm, 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 mm. I know what it's like to be in the home with bishops for sexual purposes and they smoke crack. Listen, baby, there's no exception to the rules. Oh, because everybody plays the fool. Ooh, ooh. See, because don't you're not ready for me on today or on any other day. See, because I've been there and I, I've, I've done that. What was that movie where the actor, not Morgan Freeman, hallelujah, was dating a transsexual he didn't know. It was called The Crying Game. I know all there is to know about The Crying Game. I've had my share of The Crying Game. He was in the shower throwing up. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. He also played in The Last King of Scotland. See, I've been there and I've done that. So y'all can play with somebody on your own time. Because like Tiffany Montgomery said, y'all pastors are gay. Like Prophet Celestial said, the church is greatly gay. And I just feel like it's real gay for all these men to be attacking her. Because she's a woman. Where I come from, you are a sissy. Where I grew up, <laughs> where I grew up, you was just a plain old sissy. And in my neighborhood, the men would probably jump you, beat you up, put you in a hospital. I grew up in a place where people really enjoy beating you into the hospital like if you got beat to death or you got beat into a hospital then people felt like oh yeah you know they can really fight you know he put him in a hospital wow and that was something that would be applauded like you know what i mean you see what i'm saying <laughs> you, i just you know i mean i just don't really get it because you definitely would have never And we're not condoning violence or anything like that. I'm just saying I grew up at a time when you were careful. Careful with the women folk. Very careful. I, you better, I bet you won't go to Saudi Arabia and do that. I know that you won't do it because I just spoke with a dancer, a friend of mine, who is performing with Omarion. He's performed with Usher. He's performed... With Justin Bieber for years, Janet Jackson, and we've had some discussions about the things that go on in Arabia because they have uh, <laughs> execution days on Friday where they bring people out into the town square and just remove their head in front of everybody in Arabia. See, you wouldn't do that in Pakistan, Iran. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. But in the America, the great old United States of America... Y'all can just say what you want, just do what you want, just treat people any kind of way. Beat up on women and all kinds of things. And it just seems, it just feels like to me, as somebody who is delivered and is still being delivered. Someone who is sanctified and still being sanctified. Someone that is trying to go from glory to glory. Someone that has experienced a lot of things in life. It just feels to me very gay. You know, when I was young, they mocked my mannerisms. And I always had this suspicion that the men were gay because I could not understand why men who were adults were so concerned about me. 
they would say things. I've heard a man tell me once, oh, you was just born, you was just born to, I can't even repeat the, the vow, I can't even just repeat the disgusting thing he said out of his mouth. I walked away because I was embarrassed for him because I'm like, you said that in front of people. And now they're looking at you thinking that you are a pedophile because you have t- said something perverse to me and then turned to talk to them about how I would be outside in my underwear and how my body was cut up or something. I was just born strong with some sort of silly something he said and I'm thinking, you sound like a pedophile and I'm embarrassed and I have to walk away because everybody's looking at you like you're crazy and you don't even realize it. And I'm thinking, hmm... My underwear, that may have been a very traumatic experience that happened to me That because that's sort of jogging my memory. But again, it's just so like perverse what you said. And so the point I'm making here is that while people would be focusing on me, I was always reading them for sheer and utter filth and trying to figure out why are you over there looking at me? Why are you over there looking at me? Why are you worried about me? And that's my message on today. Y'all are so worried about Celestial. You're so worried. But when she spoke about Marburg's coming because of the homosexuality, what I saw was that within weeks in Ghana, there was three men who died of Marburg's. I had never heard of the disease. Because, see, I don't do what y'all do. I take notes. And I went and I said, hmm, never heard of Marburg's. What's that? Let me go look it up. Oh, it's a real disease. Three men just died in Ghana. And then the next thing I know, the next year after that, in Nigeria and in Cameroon, there were more cases of it and they've been keeping it. They ain't been saying nothing. Why y'all worried about her? She told you that the evidence is coming out. See, you, because you want to use her videos to nitpick. You want to say, well, I don't know if she's real or I don't know if she's fake. But at the same time, you're using her video in your video, Abednego, Lufile, to prove a point and to say that you was correct for exposing T.D. Jakes because, look, this woman is saying the same thing. Why even use her to prove your point if you're saying that you don't know if she real or if she fake? But then you say that you a prophet. So how do you not know if she real or if she fake? If you're constantly casting out devils and constantly saying God speaks to you, but God couldn't tell you whether she was real or not. Help me to understand. Help me to under- make it make sense. Is that what they, I think that's what the youngster has been saying the last decade or so. Make it make sense. Always was suspicious. When I was young, I'm like, but you always, you so concerned. I think you might be a little bit gay. Is that you want me? Oh, now I see what's going on because all the other boys in the neighborhood want to sit in the basement and pull your penises out to show each other your penis for like some sort of comparison. What the hell kind of unholiness is this? I'm out of here. Oh, but then I'm the faggot. Because I'm giving, I don't want to have no parts of them. See, that's what they do. They want you to be married, have a wife, have children, act a certain way and all of that. So when they make fun of your mannerisms, again, can I talk to the gays, the transsexuals, and the fem- let me tell you the secret, if you haven't learned, because you might be young. They're homosexual inside of themselves. And they cannot handle the pressure. See, you can go out and you can wear your rainbow. And you can sing your Diana Ross. I'm coming out, coming out, want the world to. No, they can't handle that. And they hate you for being bold enough to say I'm going to be me. And I'm going to be free. Come hell or high water. Because they're so used to hiding their sins. So they cheat on their wives. They smoke their drugs. They rape, they molest. And then they talk about you because of your mannerisms. See, a man from Afghanistan told me, my friend, that he has to change how he dresses and I have to change my mannerisms because in his country, they will kill you if you're gay, if you're over 30. But if you're under 30, it's okay to be gay. But the older person has to be with a younger person and it has to be only for sex. You are not allowed to be in love and you have to not, you know, again, behave a certain way. I'm thinking to myself, my friend asked specific questions. So you mean when you say older with younger, do you mean like 12 and 16? Or just any, 
Age, it doesn't matter. Just the older with the younger. My friend kind of tried to ask again, and he still kept saying that it, the age didn't matter. So my friend said, okay, I know you're saying that it doesn't matter, but I mean like, okay, say for example, a 19-year-old and somebody that's like 14. 14, 13, 12. My friend got up and walked away. And what was odd is, as you are a store owner here in the, in the as you are a store owner in my city, and you just said it in your country, they would kill people that was over the age of 30. But now you're trying to get my friend to come to the back of your restaurant with you. Make it make sense. That's all I'm saying is make it make sense. Make it make sense. Mm, make it make sense. Make it make sense. It don't make sense. So I so the suspicion that they worry because they're gay on the inside became a knowing. Once I grew up and decided I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do because everybody else who calls himself a Christian is doing whatever the hell they want to do, that's when I began to realize, oh, it's more than a suspicion. It's a fact. They're gay on the inside, but they don't walk a certain way. They don't talk a certain way, and they may have a wife, so on and so forth, and so nobody knows. And so what's happening is I feel like it's gayness. <laughs> Some kind of Jezebel. Some kind of antichrist spirit that has everybody trying to come for the prophet Celestial because she has come for Bishop T.D. Jakes and has explained that he's going to be exposed. And when he is exposed, everybody else is going to be exposed. And so now y'all scared. <laughs> because the Holy Ghost is coming. You scared? Is that what it is? I don't understand why people just can't be real. Maybe you're scared. But the smart thing to do would be be scared and shut up. Be scared and repent. Don't be scared and then come on camera and talk trash. Because some of y'all I'm very suspicious. Some man just said that she was mentally ill. Mentally ill. You might want to talk about the aliens when she talks about the aliens, but when you have family that worked at the Pentagon, when you have family that works for the federal government, when you have family who their job is so important that they had to have meetings at the White House, and the White House decided to give them a special exemption because they didn't want to give anybody a religious exemption, and the doctors could not sign off on the health exemption because they had already denied well, not so much deny people, but the reality is they were a place where people were going to get what it is they had to get, you know. You understand what I'm saying? So they had to make a special exemption, and then within weeks, the government was no longer required to have the immunizations. And then they lifted the entire thing from the country where no one had to have the immunizations and you could travel free and so on and so forth. All because of people that you will never know. And who have said don't discuss them in specifics and in details. So we're keeping it very vague. But I'm going to help somebody on today. So what happens is because you're ignorant and you're belligerent. Is that the right word? I think that's an appropriate word. I believe that word is appropriate. Belligerent and ignorant. You will say, oh, she's mentally ill. But you don't know anybody at the Pentagon who has seen the footage and has spoken about the aliens. Even after she said that the government's going to come on TV and talk about it. And what happened? The government came on TV and exposed the fact that it's aliens. And the whole freaking world is saying, oh, it's just an excuse. They're trying to distract us. That's not what's going on. The rapture's about to happen and they're trying to... Di I What a difference a day makes, 24 little hours. It's like, I just be hearing like just random songs in my head sometimes because I just, the, the noise, the noise. I always loved in the movies, the trap doors where the king would sit on the throne and then in the throne room, help me Holy Ghost, because Holy Ghost, because now don't tell me, please Jesus don't tell me that heaven is that way. You're going to drop them through the floor. Don't drop me. Because, you know, I'm really messed up. We have conversations every day and every night. Because this mind, it's messed up. The heart, wicked. 
Help me, Holy Ghost. Don't drop me through the trap door. Because you know you'll be con- you will be condemned or justified by your words. I don't want to preach and then be a castaway, Apostle Paul said. And I say amen to that. Okay? But I used to love the trap doors. Because you would come before the king's presence talking just foolishness. And the daggone trap doors would just fall. You would just fall right through. Just the floor would just open up and then you just fall right through. And sometimes that's how I be feeling. Like just let them fall. And it's like, just play me some elevator music to keep me calm because I don't understand, because it's not making sense. I'm still waiting for somebody to make it make sense how a person can prophesy accurately. And then you sit back and you wait and you try to find a way to chop and screw her words. When if you research, you will see that Marcus Rogers baptized somebody who was found dead hours later in the near the same spot. They wouldn't say at the same spot. They left the investigation up to the military. The military didn't do much of an investigation because the police ain't going to investigate themselves. Just like on the situation in this daggone television show on, on Netflix where the girl was accused of being the real life gone girl. But in reality, the FBI agent who was working her case was dating the girl who was the original kidnap target. Because that girl and the other girl who ended up getting kidnapped was dating the same man. So somehow her boyfriend's ex-girlfriend has another boyfriend who's in the FBI and is working your case. And they're accusing you of being a real life gone girl. And trying to bury the evidence and hide the evidence and not do nothing about it. And the Netflix documentary did a terrible job at exposing that. Because they never did explain what happened to the FBI agent. I guess nothing happened because that's the way love goes. dum ba dum ba ba dum in my Janet Jackson voice. Because that's the kind of games they play in this country. So the military didn't do much of an investigation. But the news the article said. And they didn't get sued. And it didn't get retracted. And you can still find it on the internet. Because I just saw it months ago. So it should still be there. Where it specifically says that man was found dead. Near the same location where he had got baptized hours previously by Marcus Rogers. But when she tells you that he's brotherhood, y'all didn't nobody pray. See, how do I know that information? Because I said, what, Marcus Rogers? Let me go look it up. Let me go pray. T.B. Joshua, I like T.B. Joshua. Let me pray. And the Holy Ghost reminded me of several things, including the very first time I ever saw that man. And I said, that is magic. And I was impressed because it was like, I said, okay, he really got like power, supernatural, like magic. This is okay. But I was so afraid of blaspheming the Holy Ghost that I said, well, um, I shouldn't say that. And I became his biggest fan and his biggest supporter. Even when he couldn't read the Bible, I made excuses and laughed and thought it was so cute. And, oh, well, he's over that. I guess he said, that's enough Bible. I gave y'all a few little verses. Let's get back to the miracles. And I immediately felt the check in my spirit. Like the Holy Spirit was like, excuse me? What? Oh, you think it's funny? You think it's funny that he, he, he can't hardly read. He put this Bible down. He sounded like he didn't know how to read. He literally sounded like he didn't know how to read. And he sure enough was not familiar with the scriptures and was not at all able to like give any sort of revelatory teachings from the scriptures. And I'm thinking, okay, because for me, the Lord would give me something right in the moment. And sometimes it's not what I want, because sometimes what he's giving me is telling me wrong. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, I had a whole I had some notes and some scriptures and I knew where I was going and what I was going to say. And now I'm like stuck. Because you just say what I said is wrong, but I was going from that to a whole other revelation to break things down and oh, keep preaching. Don't worry. First of all, you're preaching too much about that. Move on to that. I'm thinking, okay, help me, Jesus. Make it make sense. See, you don't pray. You didn't ask God. You immediately jump to conclusions. You immediately decided to try to just, 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 just destroy her. Meanwhile, people are trafficking people through their church. Through their church. Prophets is Lori Devine. Said that Marcus Rogers is trafficking children through his church. Prophetess Celestial said he's going to be exposed. And that's what irritates me. Is because, okay, I know she's correct, but can I go a step further? 
But it's really not a step further because you already said this about T.D. Jakes and you already said that this is what they do and you already said that that's what they're going to do with Mariah. Not Mariah God. I'm sorry, Jesus. I didn't mean to say Mariah Jesus. You know, I was praying for Mariah, but then I got over it because she likes the glamour. It's the lights blinded by the action. Need that Hollywood. You got to get it. That was Beyonce's song. She was taunting and mocking them. I pray Mariah repent. Oh, Jesus. I just pray Mariah repent, Lord. And I'm going to let that go because you know how I feel about Mariah and Whitney. But the Lord said, have no idols before me. So Jesus just, okay, remove them from my, I'm not saying remove them from the earth. I'm just saying remove them from my, like, not my heart permanently, but just help me tonight. Because you see, I can't even move forward because I done got stuck and transfixed. Because when I think of them, I just get stuck. Because it's idol worship. See, that's what's wrong with you. You, you stuck. See how I was just stuck? As soon as I barely accidentally say Mariah's name, I just went into a trance. You know why? Because that's what y'all do. But you don't confess and you don't repent and you don't say, okay, Jesus, help me to just remove it because it's an idol. No, what you do is you make videos and you attack the prophets because they said something about your idol. When really what it is, is again, like I said, some of y'all is gay. Some of y'all is haters. Some of y'all is scared. Some of y'all know that you have prophesied things that wasn't true. Get over it. I felt in my heart that Reva Steenkamp's Blade Runner boyfriend was devastated. I felt so horrible for him when they locked him up because I was like, he didn't do it. And then I heard more evidence where he basically was confessing in court that he did it, but it was, a, but it was an accident. And I believed it was an accident. And I was so sad that he had to go to, to, to jail for nine years. And I would have said that God was saying it. I may have mentioned that somewhere, and Lord, I repent. I don't know most shot. You know, there's no forgiveness for blasphemy in the Holy Spirit. But, you know, I truly just believed in my spirit that the Holy Ghost was just saying, oh, they are locking this man up for no reason. But prophets just said that Reva is going to speak from the grave. And what did I do? I went to go find an article, and there was the mother two weeks ago upset because I was, she was saying he got locked up some years ago. And I was thinking, so he's out of jail. Isn't he out of jail? Well, she said he got arrested some years ago. Okay, I'm going to go find an article, and sure enough, okay, yes, he is out of jail. And apparently he just got out of jail because two weeks ago, the article in some news paper, I don't know, some sort of news outlet was saying that the mother, June Steen Camp, I believe that's S T E E N K A M P. She was a gorgeous girl. She was gorgeous. She was gorgeous. And I mean, anyone's death is sad, but you know, again, because see, we idol, it's idol worship just because she's pretty. That's why people care. But her mother was devastated. And saying that it's like doing a life sentence because they have let this man out of jail. I had to just say, okay, you are probably wrong. Now, the prophet says she's going to release the word. And the girl is going to speak from her grave because there's going to be evidence so she can prove herself in court. Because she wasn't, you know, there to really prove her case in court. So maybe they're going to lock him back up. I don't know the laws in South Africa. In America, you cannot be tried for the same crime twice. I don't know how they do it in South Africa. Maybe they're going to lock him back up. Because obviously I was incorrect. And he did do it on purpose. You know, I don't know what to think. But the point is, even when the prophecy comes forth and shows me that, okay, what I thought was God wasn't, what I thought I heard was incorrect, what I, just accept that. But see, no, y'all don't like it because you know what's happening is her words are coming to pass. And so tell me, Erayomi, when you say we have nine years left, thank you, Holy Ghost, because I wasn't... And it has nothing to do with the tribulation and it has nothing to do with this. And you're talking about Bitcoin and NFTs. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I had forgot what that was. I guess that I'm guessing that the Holy Spirit must want to, to, to say, no, call that out. I don't know, because I didn't even remember. I don't know how NFT, I, didn't even, I forgot that existed. But I remember you want to talk about all of that stuff. And the whole time I'm saying to myself, the economy is going to crash and Bitcoin is crashing with it. So when Celestial says there's going to be one type of a cryptocurrency, thank you, Lord, because you're helping, helping me with the words on today. One type of government sanctioned and ordered and controlled <sighs> cryptocurrency. She didn't use those specific words. The point is there's going to be one cryptocurrency that the government's going to control. And the rest will go away. And I said to myself, and I knew that. And then I get so angry every time anybody say anything about the Bitcoin. And I believe and tell me, Arayomi, Arayomi. And I watch him and him and his twin brother. 
But every time he talks on it, it just pisses me off. Because I'm like, people are believing this, and I'm sorry, but he's wrong right there. And he said, we got nine years left, and it has not until the new world. He didn't even say rapture. He said, not until the new world order. I'm thinking, do you really think? So you, you trying to tell me that nine years from now, which was a few years back, a couple of years back, it could have been 2022, 2021, 2020, I don't know. You mean to tell me that you think that coming up on 2030, we still not going to have the New World Order? It's, I'm saying now, okay, maybe you misunderstood what the Lord was saying. But I never made a video. I never attacked. I kept supporting. I kept loving. Even when I was like, oh, you might be off. Because you know the Bible says, let the prophets prophesy two or three. So I let y'all talk. But I am going to judge because the Bible says, let the prophets prophesy two or three and let the others judge. I'm judging it. That's what the Bible said to do. Remember the Bereans? Remember how he said to be one that can rightly divide the word of truth? Remember he said that? A watchman who needs not be ashamed. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Hmm. But see, you don't want to do that, and you don't, and then you get mad when other people do it. And so, what happens is when Prophet Celestial says, "You got two years left in 2025, 2025, the wheels has fallen off." See, what you did was you went snooping, and when you hear those kinds of things, you get upset because if what she said is true, then what that means, what you said ain't true, and you getting scared because she already called T.D. Jakes out, and now it's happening, because she even said that the evidence is going to come out, and the so-called prophet Manasseh, don't get me started on him, because the witches, you know on TikTok, they have something called witch talk, they have a portion, a segment, a kingdom, in TikTok land, specifically for the witches, and in their some, there's different types of witchcraft and there's different covens and there's some covens that are millions. Uh, or Thank you, Holy Spirit, because I don't even know. Is that true, God? Because I didn't read that anywhere. But they have a line that goes back for generations. So there's a woman on there, and I forgive me, Jesus, because she was sweeping the house out with the broom. And she went and she turned the broom upside down and was knocking. And it was reminding me of some stuff in the family. I was like, yes, because you know, sometimes, because grandma got to, you got to sweep them, throw down some salt and sweep. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. It's witchcraft. Our ancestors, and they just made us think it was culture. I rebuke it in renouncing and denouncing in Christ and rejected in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But yeah, <laughs> the witches, she said. They stopped doing confiscation rituals because it's so dangerous. Prophet Manasseh on there talking about confiscation and you cover your eyes and you cover your ears. His dad on daddy to mess him up. Help me, Holy Ghost. She said, it's very dangerous. He said, you know, sometimes God would take the prophet. I'm like, as in dad. And the witch said the same thing. See, I have a problem when the witches on witch talk can reveal the same. And say, oh, yeah, the, when you say God will take the prophet, he means they're going to be dead. And you in a cave somewhere, and you in India, and your father got pictures with all these Indian shamans, all this kundalini, chakras and serpent spirits, talking about a confiscation, and the witches are on TikTok trying to warn the people and say, don't, listen, we, they stopped doing that 100, 100 years ago, hundreds of years ago. They been stopped doing that a long time ago. Ain't nobody in the church warning you. Hmm. But nevertheless, the so-called prophet, because y'all love him. Brian Carr started hanging out with him. I thought, okay. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Mm -mm -mm. My Lord. So anyway, and he brought out receipts. T.D. Jakes in his inbox talking about I'm thinking of you. See, I've been there and done that. There's people that could be like, oh, let me show you what he sent me. Let me show you what he did. Let me tell you what he said. That's why I'm saying, why don't you just repent? Why don't you just ask God for forgiveness instead of trying to attack the prophets? Why don't you just stop and just hope that your stuff don't come out? And if it do, you just have to say, well, okay, Lord, I stopped. And, you know, too much is given, much is required. You reap what you sow. I don't know. I put my life in the hands of God. You know what it was? Was it King David? 
Somebody in the Bible, the Lord said, look, punishment is coming. I'm going to let you pick your poison, as they say. You know, that's me paraphrasing, right? Because either I can, you can have this for three days. You can have this for three hours. You can go through this for three years. Whatever. It was a choice. He said, I'd rather be in the hands of God. And the Lord came through with judgment. And it was not pretty. But it happened and it was over. And the Lord's wrath was appeased. And you lived to see another day. But his whole thing was, let me fall into the hands of God. Not these mere mortals. And I feel him on that note. I feel him on that one. My ancestors in Israel. My ancestors. I think that was King David. I'm not sure. Yes, God. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Don't let me fall into the hands of these people. These people. Mere mortals. But see, you don't want to repent. You'd rather get upset because you know that your prophecies are about to fail. And then you want to try to come for celestial. And just really are exposing yourself that you are a hater. William, a.k.a. Ty Jackson. When she said there's no hope and there's no need for hope. And it's not my job to babysit you and I don't have to give you hope. All I did was say, well, okay, Jesus, I accept that because I was in this bedroom. She just is never any hope. And I just feel like, I just, I can't listen to her anymore because it just, it just feels hopeless. And so the re it's just bow and accept the rebuke. Because before I know it, within days, it seemed like she was making the video to say, get your hope from the Bible. I said, well, build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Because time is the field with the swift transition. We ain't got no Baptists in the house. We ain't got no old school Baptists. I don't know that one. I had to just go ahead and accept the rebuke and reject those negative emotions and thoughts that are inspired by Satan because she's absolutely right. It's not her job to give you hope. But see, Ty Jackson wanted to play that part and then give you scriptures to make it seem like she is being unbiblical and unscriptural. But what you did was edit her video and you didn't show the part where she says, get your hope from God, from the Bible, because that's what she had to do. You got questions? Ask God. Fast and pray. Because that's what she had to do. She don't have time to babysit. She's a lawyer. She has a legal background. College educated. And nobody's going to be sitting up in college babysitting you and allowing you to ask whatever questions you want to ask. You will be removed from class because you're supposed to shut up and take notes. And learn from the professor and get ready for the test. She's just trying to get you ready for the test. But you want to run your mouth. And so you get mad because we live in a country where people are immature. I'm raising my hand because immature. And unprofessional. I'm raising my hand because you want to have temper tantrums and you want to quit jobs and things. Repent. And then you want to have an attitude and try to come for her. You can't come for her. You can't come for the Holy Ghost. So repent because Jesus Christ is Lord and he is on his way. So get a Bible, read it and do what it say. God bless you.